Hi, I'm Dr. Ramsey Amin. The topic today is broken bridges, broken all on four bridges especially. So lately I've been seeing a rise in, you know, seeing patients for complications of the all on four procedure, which I'm not a, a huge fan of on the upper jaw as much. Uh, I think it's a little bit under engineered. But what we're seeing is that some of the teeth that are being made on this type of restoration either aren't very strong, they're breaking a lot, or they're made a little bit too thin. So here are, here are some tips on kind of how to avoid breakage, because these can happen very soon after having you know the real teeth. So first off, it all comes down to pre-surgical planning. That means before you ever had an implant put in, that everything is designed and surgery is done with the restoration in mind, the very, very, the final teeth, how they're gonna look, where they're gonna be, what the bite is gonna be like. Everything should be really answered before anything is done whatsoever. That's especially important uh, in, in this type of, you know, all on four, five, seven. I, I like to have a few more implants, maybe five or six in the lower and seven, eight, nine on the top or zygomatic implants on top for additional strength. But the reality is the bridge is gonna get its strength often from the materials and the design. So material number one for breakage is acrylic. These, these are called hybrid restorations. That means that there's generally plastic on top of metal, metal inside plastic denture teeth on the outside. So you can just imagine it has two layers like um, like wood that's been laminated over. The top layer can peel off the bottom stronger layer. So that's the weak point in the hybrid restoration is the teeth. So the teeth snap off all the time, besides starting to look bad after just a year or two because they're really just made from denture teeth, they, they do break quite frequently. So that's, that's one thing is material choice, uh, either a porcelain fused to metal, but more ideally a solid zirconia, as solid as possible, meaning one, one, one material all the way through. There's no different layering at all, maybe at the gum line only, where there's a little bit of a different layer just for aesthetics, but all the biting surfaces where you touch and you grind, everything is solid zirconia. That's called a Pertow dental implant bridge. That's a style that I make for a lot of patients, not for everybody. But most important, so going back to the surgery, that there's enough room from top to bottom that the bridge is thick enough. So from thickness standpoint, oftentimes I do a bone leveling alveoloplasty, and I'll make a link for that below so that you can read about that. That gives extra room, it puts all the implants at the same level, and makes sure that the bridge has enough uh, thickness from top to bottom. We, want, we don't want your teeth to be thick, but the actual bridge to be thick in the right locations. All of these restorations, we call them FP3 restorations, that have a little bit of pink, a little bit of white that replaces both tooth and gum. They're gonna they're gonna be a little bit different, you know, in their contour against your tongue and the roof of your mouth because they're replacing not only teeth but they're replacing gum and bone. So in doing so, you got to make sure that the jaw joint, called the condyle, is fully seated inside of it. It's like a knee joint; it kind of functions like this. It has to make sure that it's fully seated inside the the jaw, and that all the movement that you make from side to side, not just up and down, actually function in such a way that give you a stable and reproducible bite and the jaw joint is put back into its normal, normal pattern. If you, if you used to grind your teeth when you had teeth, you'll likely grind your teeth with, with the new teeth. Even if we design your di bite perfectly, so strength is gonna be really important to the design of actually how you bite, how the teeth are shaped, how each tooth protects another, so you can actually design the bite as a protective occlusion or a protective bite. But how do you fix you know, the broken ones? So oftentimes either adding additional implants, so all on four we see fail between the very last implant and in the middle, and in the middle section between the last implant and one of the front implants. It's a big span where there's no, no support and we get a little bit of flexure underneath there or perhaps it's too thin and we see breakage occur right there. So if you do have to make your bridge a little bit thinner because your, your skeleton is a little bit thinner or there's just not enough space, having extra implants underneath 
makes it so there's not such a long gap where like a like a the Golden Gate Bridge has two big anchors, but if it got longer, you'd have to add a center anchor underneath to prevent it from you know, breaking down the center. So having more implants, especially in the back, is always better. It supports the bridge long term, especially if good materials are used. Uh, the porcelain fused to metal are difficult to repair if it breaks because metal becomes exposed and that's hard to bond back onto a repair in the office. It can be done, especially if it hasn't gone down to the metal. The acrylic bridges can be removed. You can actually replace your acrylic bridge with a zirconia bridge as long as there's enough space to do it. Uh, but that's kind of the basics. If, if you're having breakage, really the bite has to be worked out. It needs to be you know, thick enough. If it's not thick enough, perhaps that your jaw, you call your bite or your VDO, can be opened a little bit taller to create more space. Um, unfortunately, I've seen many cases where uh, the bridge was too thin and broke, you know, many times, just month after month, breakage, 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 and nothing could be done except for to remove the bridges and actually take out the implants. Put a whole new set of implants in at a deeper level to get more thickness. Everything breaks, so designing things, over-engineering things in such a way that protects it long-term and short-term from breakage is great, but it breaks my heart when I have to remove people's dental implants after they're almost done or completely done and, and start all over. Again, uh, planning is, is best. Um, using a very experienced provider I think will help you. I hope this helps. If there's any questions, uh, let me know. Answer on the blog down below, www BurbankDentalImplants.com backslash blog. I'm Dr. Ramsey Amin. I hope this was helpful for you. Thanks so much.